Hi guys, welcome to Making Sawdust. I'm Kevin and thank you for joining me. Today we are making this jig that's going to allow me to adjust my table saw trunnion and fence. I have a Craftsman Contractor table saw where I will use this jig in a variety of different ways. I've also designed this jig so with a few adjustments it can help you adjust your saw and also suit your needs. I needed this jig to fit in the miter slot and also slide free, but it also needs to be adjustable so it can be positioned close to the surface where you're measuring. A high level of accuracy at the beginning stages of any project will result in better overall quality of your project and that usually starts with a table saw. I start by first cutting a hardwood runner that fits perfectly into the miter slot on the saw. I chose this maple because it is very tight grain so it will remain stable and not give me too many troubles during seasonal changes. I now needed to cut an adjustable base and the main body for this jig. I used some scrap blue pine and some cherry for the base. I will glue these two pieces of cherry together making the base approximately 3 inches by 6 inches and a quarter inch thick. I am using my router plate I made in a previous video, but I have positioned it in my table saw wing so I can use it as a router table. I am using a piece of scrap as a fence and the entire thing is clamped securely to the wing. I recessed an area with a 3 8 router bit for the screw head to fit and I finished up by plunging through with a quarter inch bit. Using a push paddle obviously is for safety, but it greatly increases the control so your slots can be very accurate. I wanted the heads of my fasteners to sit a bit below the surface, not entirely out of necessity, but more to show you folks the versatility of an inexpensive setup. I had a little bit of fine tuning to do with the slots, but these nail file boards came in handy. Another reason I chose this maple is it holds the threads very well, like a few other hardwoods. I am also using wooden threads here, so I am installing a hardwood dowel because it is less likely to strip the threads. Wooden threads are surprisingly strong and based on the application and requirements, they are perfectly acceptable. After gluing our body to the base, it is time to make the articulating arms. These arms will be made out of cherry and I will install short pieces of 3 8 inch aluminum tubing with some epoxy so they will not spin inside the holes I drilled. I cut the aluminum tubing slightly longer than the width of the arm so once the epoxy had cured I could sand the aluminum flush with the arms leaving a clean finish. I reamed three of the holes so a quarter twenty bolt could slip through and I threaded the fourth hole simply because of the material that I had on hand. If you have tubing or pipe that fits your fastener you would not have to do that. This is a garage sale find last year that needs a bit of repair and maybe a paint job too. This is a Craftsman 4x36 belt sander with a 6 inch disc, nearly identical to the modern versions today. They are a great tool to have in the shop. For those of you folks that don't know, I have a thing for Craftsman tools. So if you want to see me repair the bearings on the sander or you also have a thing for Craftsman tools, click the subscribe button and the bell too so you don't miss anything on making sawdust. I needed my articulating arms to overlap one another so the dial indicator could stay positioned along the center line of the jig to avoid any balance issues that could result in an inaccurate reading. I am cutting through the aluminum tubing but I am also going very slow and steady in my cut. I am also clamping the workpiece very securely to the miter fence. If you do not feel comfortable doing this, please do not. Making the knobs was a very simple process. I had some blood wood that was about one inch square, so I drilled a 3 8 hole using a Forstner bit so it would accept the head of a quarter twenty bolt. I then filled the hole with some 2P10 CA glue and some sawdust, being certain to let it cure fully before I shaped it using my drill over on my sander. Now 
Now that we are finished, the jig will serve a variety of functions. I can use it horizontally or vertically and anywhere in between. Completely adjustable for many applications in my shop, like the trunnion adjustment in the very next video, along with alignment of my table saw fence. I can also use this jig over at my router table so I can measure bit height too. Let me know in the comments below how you would use this jig and as always, get out in your shop and make some sawdust. Remember, a perfectly tuned and adjusted saw will not only increase accuracy, but it will greatly reduce the risk of injury or accident.